Welcome to the Deep Leadership Podcast. Today, I'm joined by James Elliott. James is a certified leadership coach and trainer. He is an aerospace safety and quality professional, an aviator, and the founder of High Adventure Leadership. He is a student of leadership and has been leading teams for more than 25 years in both business and in the Coast Guard. I've known James for several years. We met originally on Twitter, and I've always loved his insights on the subject of leadership. So I am excited to have him on the show today. So James, welcome to the show. Oh, good morning, John. Well, thank you for having me on the show. This is this is a long time coming. I mean, we uh, talk about leadership a lot and um, just keep, seem to keep missing each other, but we're finally here. So this is going to be fun. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's, it's funny. A lot of people use social media to just fight back and forth about politics and whatever, you know, sports teams that you're excited about or what have you. I found the Twitter to be an amazing place to learn and to meet people. And you're one of the great people I've met through Twitter and through, I would say, leadership Twitter, if that's even a thing, but uh, people talking and thinking about leadership. So mm -hmm. uh, I'm excited to have you on the show. I'm excited. I look forward to, you know, learning from your experiences and also talking about your new venture, high adventure leadership. So I'm looking forward to talking about that. But let's get us started. So tell us about your background you know, you've been a student of leadership for years. Where did you develop your passion for the subject? And, uh, you know, how did you get into the world of leadership? All right. Well, gosh, it's probably over 35 years ago. Um, you know, as a young Boy Scout, um, I've had uh, leadership, the verb leadership. Because, you know, verb is, uh, leadership is a verb. It's not, it's action, right? It's, it's not a position, right? So I've had that verb in my vocabulary for over 35 years. Uh, probably started out as a Boy Scout. Uh, now I'm not sure how the Boy Scouts are today, but you know, 35 years ago, my specific troop, the boys did everything. Yeah, the adults were there, they supported, but if you wanted to go on a camp out, you, you had to arrange it yourselves, you had to plan it, you had to get the equipment, you had to get the food, go do the shopping. Um, and so, you know, starting out 12 years old, my son just turned 12. So I'm kind of looking at him thinking, well, gosh, when I was his age, I was planning campouts, going down with my patrol to uh, the store to buy food and supply us and get in our gear. And then when we get there, you're, you're leading, uh, delegating tasks and who's doing what job in the campsite. And this is all as a 12 year old, right? And so uh, I would say all the way back into the Boy Scouts is where sort of this leader, leadership uh, began. And it's been with me uh, throughout my life. Mm, uh, you know, came in Eagle Scout when I was 15, um, using the same skills I had learned in the Boy Scouts all throughout high school, college, and actually the, probably the foundation of uh, my leadership in my professional career. Mm. It's interesting. I, I was also, you know, I, I really never thought of it that way, but I was a Boy Scout as well. Uh, unfortunately, I got to be 16 years old as a life scout and never made Eagle because I found cars and girls. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I uh, and so anyone who's listening, who's got a son that's uh, trying to get to be Eagle Scout, I would recommend that they do it before they turn 16, because there's a something that happens at 16. But I, but you know, when I think about it, there were a lot of foundations I had in my, you know, I went through Cub Scouts and Weeblos and, and Boy Scouts, and I did learn a lot of leadership. And again, mm -hmm. you, you had to do it all yourself. You had to lead at a very young age. And I think that probably is what attracted me to wearing a uniform as an adult in the mm -hmm. military too. So I think, I think it's a great, uh, you know, I know the Boy Scouts are different today than they were back mm -hmm. then, but I think uh, for me, at least I learned a lot through those uh, experiences and and uh, yeah, so it's a great foundation um, for leadership and, and also character issues, right? And the one thing the scouts talked about back then was a lot of character issues like, you know, integrity and, and, yes. uh, and honor and, and, mm -hmm. and all these great things that I probably can remember the scout, scout oath if I really think about it. But, <laughs> but yeah, so yeah, it's a good foundational place yeah. to learn some of the basics of how to, how to treat people and how to lead people. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, so you got what um, our friend Chief Chuck would say, the fumes. Oh. The oh. gasoline fumes and the perfumes. Yeah, <laughs> that's what happened to me. <laughs> so, yes. Yeah, so but, uh, you, actually, you actually hit a good spot, though. The, um, yeah, the Boy Scouts, for me, it's developing those early uh, values, right? Those mm -hmm. what we call core values, uh, integrity, respect, 
being committed, mm -hmm. um, learning, growth. So yeah, it's, and yeah. For, so for me, it was a great experience and people have different experiences. Obviously it depends on when you were in the organization, depends on, it really depends on your local troop and where you grew up and how it was organized. Yeah. But no, uh, for I, me, it was a great experience. No, I love that. I love that. It was good for me too. And I never really thought about it, but it, it, it was an early, it was an early, it was an early exposure to leadership and mm -hmm. And character issues that I think I've, I've had throughout my whole life. So, yeah. um, well, it's it's a um, it's an opportunity that we got that a lot of kids don't. Yeah, a lot of kids yeah. didn't even hear the word leadership until they're thrust into some type of supervisory position after they've graduated high school and started their career someplace. Oh yeah, or or or, or finished college, mm -hmm. and then they get to their first job and they have a boss. <laughs> who's not warm and fuzzy, like yeah. maybe their professors might have been, or you know, or their counselors in in college, and suddenly they got a guy like me saying, "We got to get it done. You got to stay. You got to stay. We got to get it done." They're like, yes. "Wait a second, yeah. I'm uncomfortable." <laughs> uh, okay, <laughs> so yeah, it's a good point. Yeah, sometimes yeah. it's it's uh, and 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 getting it getting uh, engaged with the stuff early is really important. Mm -hmm. So, and in fact, that's my next question. He probably probably relates to it is that. You know, why do you think that there's such a leadership crisis in, in, in the, I would say in the world today, I would say in the U.S. definitely, but in the, in the world, I see it as well. Why do you think that we are having such a, an absence of uh, good leadership these days? Well, you know, and I was calling it a leadership crisis too, until I suddenly realized that the word crisis is just used too much today. Everything's a crisis, it seems, right? You look, you turn on the news and it's a financial crisis or it's a pandemic crisis or <laughs> you name it, right? I'm like, gosh, it's not really, a crisis to me is something that's a short-term issue. This is a long-term issue. Yeah. This goes yeah. back a long ways. Um, I think the key to it is this, leadership is not taught. Uh, you mentioned it when someone graduates from college, they don't teach, you get an engineering, engineering degree in college, you're, you're not going to, there's no leadership class, right? There's right. no course to tell you how to be a leader. Really, there's, unless you specifically study it, there's no project management courses, right? Yeah. You, you get yeah. your degree, you get your technical degree, technical degree uh, which mine's in chemical engineering. Uh, yeah, I can be an engineer, but your first day on the job, you find out you're managing a project. Well, shoot, right. Right. there's leadership involved in that, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. So, so it's not taught. Now, um, if you go to the mil if you go through a military um, service, so say you go to the academy, right? One of the uh, service academies, or you, or you graduate from OCS like you did. Um, when the day one, you start the job, now you're expected to be a leader but they teach leadership. Hmm. They, they, they expect you to do that. Whereas in the corporate world, that is not the case. Actually, what happens in the corporate world is you start working in whatever technical area or whatever your degree is. Let's just say, let's just take an engineer, for example, right? So you, you get your degree in engineering, you start as an engineer, you're an individual contributor. And then you're doing such a good job that you get tapped on the shoulder one day and said, we want you now to be the manager of the other engineers. <laughs> They're like, yeah. awesome, great, more money, yeah. right? But they haven't prepared you to lead at all. You've been an individual contributor the entire time. And now all of a sudden you're put into a leadership position. And what I've typically seen is people will do one of two things. Either they will go out and seek it. They'll realize, hey, I've got to learn something and they'll go find a book and a podcast, they'll start their own. Unfortunately, most people fall back on, well, the reason I got promoted was I was a good engineer, so I know how to do this job. I'll just tell you how to do it. And now they start mm. becoming that micromanaging type of boss. Um, yeah, yeah. And people but, go back to their comfort zone. Like, <clears throat> I'm, a, I'm a good engineer. I'm going to yeah. tell people how to do their engineering mm -hmm. versus... I'm a leader now. I have a different role, and I and and, and I need to do that new role, yep. which is not necessarily being the best engineer, but being the best leader for this group of engineers. Absolutely. And then in the corporate world, now there's this fear of failure. 
right? Mm -hmm. Because I just got promoted. I've got to produce, but how do I do that, right? Well, I don't have the leadership skills to get my people to produce. So I'm just going to go do it for them, right? I'm going to micromanage them. I'm going to make sure they're getting it done the way I want them to get it done. So I'm protecting my career. Mm, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and it, and we're talking sort of broad brushes here, right? But there, there's an element of that in a lot of places. Yeah, I, def so, I definitely see that. And, <clears throat> and, and I do think you're right in that we don't prepare people for roles in leadership. I, I do a lot of speaking at uh, graduate uh, programs. And I remember the first time I did it, I was speaking to an international MBA program down at the University of South Carolina. And a great, they have a great international MBA program. And I was there to teach uh, like a two hour lecture on leadership. And um, <laughs> at the end of it, I was talking to a few students and I was like, I was like, so how many you know, lectures like this or, or classes do you have on leadership? And they said, well, you're the first one. And this was their capstone class, their last class after two and a half years of study. And they haven't had anything on leadership. So they had, you know, they had accounting, they had legal, they had, you know, they had uh, marketing and sales and operations and they have no leadership training, which is really scary. It was scary to me. And that's really when I realized, okay, I, I've got to do this. I've got to keep, you know, keep engaging in this because not enough of people are teaching the subject of leadership. Oh, absolutely. And so, you know, we go into that corporate environment. Now, I've worked for several large multinational companies. And yeah, they have some sort of leadership, big quotes, leadership training. Uh, some of it is management disguised as leadership. So it's not really leadership. It's more of a management topics. But then again, there's a gap, right? Because they don't prepare everybody by putting them through that training before they put them in a leadership position. Typically, you've got to be a, already a high performer right. to be able to um, go to those courses. So the mm -hmm. analogy I give is this, right? Um, say leadership is swimming. All right, follow me here. Yeah. So leadership is swimming. Well, instead of giving you swimming lessons before they put you in the leadership pool, <laughs> they just drop you in the deep end and yeah. have tell you to tread water. So yeah. they put you in that leadership position, you're treading water. Those who can't tread water drown and they leave the company. Yeah. Right? Well, those left treading the water, only the ones who can tread the water the best well, we're going to give you swimming lessons now. Right, right. right? Yeah. And so you leave the majority of your other leaders who have never had any leadership training, treading water, where everybody else gets leadership lessons. Um, and the whole reason why you were put in that leadership pool to begin with is because you're good at playing chess. Yeah, right. right. It was a, a topic that's completely different than leadership. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yes, I always say that too. Like, and you you use the analogy of an engineer becoming an engineering manager, and I use that analogy a lot because it happened to me. I was an uh, engineer, yeah. mm -hmm. who became an engineering manager, but I realized, I mean, for me at least, uh, at least I had the military background to know. But um, but yeah, it's a completely different job being an engineer and being an engineering manager. That's like chess and swimming. It is yeah. there are two different jobs. Yes, you have to have some knowledge of engineering, but it's, it's a, it becomes a people business at that point. You're no longer, you know, a tech, I mean, you have yes. to be technical, but yeah. you're no longer a technical expert. You are now a people expert and it's a completely different uh, role. And people, I don't think people appreciate that. Uh, I don't yeah. think companies appreciate that. And uh, like you say, they, th we throw you in the deep end and say, mm -hmm. you know, good luck. <laughs> good luck. Yeah. Um, and so something else I've been recently talking to other, um, managers at my um, where I'm currently employed is in the topic of you know learning and continual learning about leadership is would you go to a doctor who has never studied medicine yeah no <laughs> or or would you hire someone to represent you in court who's never studied law right and the answer is no but yet we've got millions of people in leadership positions who have never studied leadership yeah yeah. They've got the title, they've got the position, and that's they stop. They don't go any further. Yeah, yeah. So that that in a nutshell is our leadership crisis, right? Is how do we uh, create a system to better develop leaders and organizations? Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Um, you you say something, and I like it. You've I've heard I've heard you say it before, and now I saw it on your your website, your new website, and you say that good leaders are always learning. 
and great leaders are always returning. What do you mean by that? Okay, well, yeah, this is a perfect segue, right? We talked about yeah. leadership development. So good leaders are always learning, all right? Leadership, the action, is, an, is a skill, all right? It's a skill that's perishable. So if you're not using it, all right, it's going to fade. And the whole topic of leadership is so broad and deep that there's a lot to keep up on. Mm. So my idea or my concept is good leaders are always learning, all right? Good leaders are always feeding their leadership development, right? You just don't go to one class and stop. Oh, I checked the yeah. box. I went to the leadership <laughs> development course. I am now a leader. No, 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 no. It's, it's continual. Mm -hmm. right? You're always learning, right? So it can be simple as books, podcasts, uh, videos, uh, going to workshops, going to classes, having discussions with your colleagues, um, posting or having discussions in different forums, whether online or in person. It's what are you doing on a regular basis to keep feeding your own leadership development? So that's what good leaders are always learning. Um, you can't really be a good leader without that thirst for knowledge, without wanting to improve, right? Because if you don't want to improve yourself, if you're not improving yourself, then what's going to drive you to improve your people? Mm. Right? I, every, I want to say, bad leader I've known <laughs> had no interest in improving others. Yeah. All right. And what, and what I really sort of um, probe and try to find out what's going on, I find out that they're not learning themselves, right? They, they, they're not reading books. They're not listening to podcasts. They're not going to classes, right? Says, well, I've been to the leadership class. I don't need to go anymore. Yeah. Like, well, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> uh, yes, you do, <laughs> sir. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's, uh, so that's, that's the first part is good leaders are always learning, right? So the, the second half of that though, is as a good leader, you're bringing in all these knowledge and skills, all right? You need to be a river, not a reservoir, right? You're not mm -hmm. collecting all this for yourself. You're collecting this so you can turn around and now give it back to somebody else. Mm -hmm. So that's good leaders. Are, great leaders are always returning because they're giving back to the organization. They're mentoring and they're coaching the next generation of leaders. Um, when they find out something new, they're so excited, they can't wait to go share it with somebody else and, mm. and spread it, um, spread the wealth of leadership with everybody else. So that's, so that's what this little slogan is, is good leaders are always learning, great leaders are always returning. And yeah, uh, I love it. I'm I think it's to, great. Yeah. Yeah. Hope no, I think it resonates. Get that imprinted on people's minds. Yeah, no, I agree. It, it does. It resonates. And and it's it's in, and, it, and like what you're saying, it's it's not just about the individual development, but then it's passing it on and, and growing the next generation, which is what the great leaders do is they they help develop the next generation. They don't just keep it within themselves. So, but uh, you know, on the subject of of always learning, uh, there's a great book, leadership book called Lead Yourself First. It was written by a friend of mine, Mike Irwin, um, and you know, I really like that book. It's a great book. I recommend it to people, but. I'm just going to, you know, talking about you personally as a leader, how do you lead yourself? What are some of your self-improvement habits as, as a leader? What are some of the things that you do um, that, you know, you'd recommend to other leaders as they come into the leadership role to, to kind of keep, keep, you know, sharpening your spear? Well, good. Yeah. There's another great segue, right? Because uh, we're talking about good leaders are always learning mm -hmm. and that self. So I, if you go on my website, highadventureleadership.com, you'll see three categories, leading self, leading others, leading performance. Mm -hmm. And the first one, leading self, is before you can lead other people, you got to learn how to lead yourself, right? And people, are, they're going to do, they're going to do what they see, not what you say, right? So um, it's very critical that leaders um, lead themselves and set the example for everybody else. So how do you go into doing that, right? So it starts, for me, it starts with values, right? Uh, do you know your core values, all right? Mine are integrity, respect, commitment, and growth, all right? I can tell you right now what they are and rattle them off, but you'll be amazed how many uh, potential leadership candidates I've interviewed 
And I ask them straight up that question, what are your core values? And it's like, I hit them with a brick. <laughs> yeah, they have, yeah. They have, they have absolutely, what, what do you mean? No, yeah. what are your core values? So they've never, and what tells me is they've never taken the time to think about it, right? They've never taken the time to consider, well, what are my core values? What, are, what is the rock that I cling to in, in making hard decisions, right? Mm. So that's the first thing, it's your core values. Um, so taking time to develop those, know what they are, uh, don't compromise them. I mean, I will leave an organization before I'll compromise a core value. I mean, mm. you, you really, that's gotta be that important to you. Um, the next is um, learning. Yeah. Uh, just like I taught, great, good leaders are always learning, right? Is for me, it's, it is reading books. It's listening to the podcast, like deep leadership. It's, um, <laughs> it's uh, videos. It's going to some classes. It's having those discussions. It's, if I'm not doing it daily, I'm probably every other day I'm doing something, right? Now I'll go through phases. Um, sometimes I'll read some books. Sometimes I'll lay off on the reading and I'm catching up on podcasts, mm. but I'm doing something. Um, always a little bit of something um, almost every day. So here, here's, a good, here's a good picture of that. Imagine you take two people at the beginning of the year, same fitness level, and one goes to a three-week uh, CrossFit boot camp, all right? Mm. Okay. Um, now, there's nothing wrong with a three-week CrossFit boot camp, right? Sometimes people need to go to a course to learn the skills they need to um, keep going. But this person goes to that boot camp and does nothing the rest of the year. Mm. Where somebody else decides, well, every day I'm going to go jog for 30 minutes. And maybe that jogging turns into running and turns into calisthenics and turns into weightlifting. But they do a little bit of something every day for the entire year. At the end of the year, which one of those are going to be more fit? Yeah, it's always the, you know, the one that's continuously working on it. Yeah, absolutely. So that's, that's the analogy I tell people. So yeah, you can go, please go to the workshop, go to the course, because you're going to learn some stuff that's going to be good for you. But that's not the end of it. You don't just check the box, punch the ticket, and I'm done. It's what are you doing to continually feed um, your own leadership development? Yeah, I really like that. Um, I, you know, especially today, right? So, you know, back in the day, you might be able to get like a, a book on tape, right? Or you might mm -hmm. be able to get some sort of motivational thing on tape that you could put in your car. But mm -hmm. right now you have access to thousands of podcasts on yes. uh, leadership and business and sales and all the things that you need to, to, to work on to hone your craft, right? And we're in our cars, we commute. I know mm -hmm. you're in California and you have some rough commutes. I've seen oh, that yeah. <laughs> some days, uh, but we have these commutes. Yeah. We're in our car and we could be listening to, you know, top 10 radio or whatever. We could be listening to sports talk, which yeah. is never ending back and forth or who the greatest quarterback ever was. And, you know, all that kind of yeah, stuff. Joe Montana. But anyway, <laughs> or, <laughs> or, or we could be, or we could be get you, you know, seeking self-improvement through an audio book or through podcast. And, and I think that, um, you know, I, for me, at least, uh, you know, uh, and, and coach brew, John Brubaker calls it dashboard mm -hmm. university. I really yeah. I like that terminology, but yeah, you can learn so much by listening to, uh, you know, podcasts, audiobooks, and and while you're driving, while you're doing something else, and uh, you're so you're feeding your mind even as a busy person. So yeah, that's 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 great. Absolutely, yeah. I call it Automobile University after uh, the great Zig Ziglar. Oh um, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, he used to have the tapes where you could listen to the tapes. Yeah, uh, yeah. But no, that's that's where I do the majority of my podcast catch up is on my commute. Yeah, so, yeah. Same uh, here. Yeah. Same yeah. here. And, and it's funny too, because I, you know, I have certain podcasts I listen to throughout the week. And if, and mm -hmm. I know when a certain podcast didn't get released, I'm like, wait, where's the podcast? <laughs> it's, I expect to see it. So, and yeah. it's, it's a free resource, but yet we get upset when we don't have it. So, but uh, yeah, no, I, so I really encourage uh, leaders. Yeah. That's a great, uh, that's a great uh, analogy. Just, just keep learning, have it, develop it and, and do something every day yeah. to get better. I think that's a great analogy. The fitness analogy is really good. So, well, um, go well, let me throw in here. So there's different levels of learning, right? Mm -hmm. You got rote, 
memorization, right? So I can memorize facts. I don't understand what they are, but I can regurgitate them, right? Right. The bare minimum. And you got understanding. So I know the facts. I understand what they are. Then you've got application, which I understand what the facts are and I can apply them. And then the highest level of learning is correlation, right? So it's now I'm in a new situation, but because of the knowledge I have, I can correlate and work out what I need to do in this situation, right? I don't need to be yeah. told exact instructions. Mm -hmm. And so people starting out in their leadership career, leadership development, they're going to start out at the very bottom. They're going to read a book. They're going to say, oh, here are the 10 steps you need to be the be a great leader or something, right? And they're going to memorize those and they're going to go out and try to do them and they're going to probably fail. <laughs> um, <laughs> they're gonna, it's going to be tough, right? Um, there's a difference between um, the um, what, what you read in the book and then when you get out into the real world, there's a little bit of a translation there. Right. But what, my, what I would tell people is keep going, right? Because you're going to first learn the rote concepts and then you're going to start understanding how they actually apply then you're going to be able to actually start applying them and then you're going to reach correlation to where oh my gosh all these different pieces of leadership are now coming together so. yeah absolutely and I, and I think at some point i always talk to tell people to trust your gut but your gut has to have that you have to have gone through those stages to have that correlation yeah. to have that gut instinct on how mm -hmm. to deal with all these different issues that are similar to things you've seen before and uh but that's that's where instincts come in when you've been doing it a while and and mm -hmm. i always say as leaders that are experienced leaders that do trust your gut because your gut has a lot of you know you have a lot of experiences and you have yeah. a lot of uh you've seen a lot of different things so i think i think that's important as well so that no that's great i, I really like that so so if you look back you know in your in your your career or the things that you've read or what you've been exposed to, who are some of your leadership role models? Who are the people that inspire you uh, to become a better version of yourself? Oh, well, you know, I'm gonna start with my dad. Mm. Um, we're gonna start going the way back machine here. <laughs> um, and uh, I would say my first off starting out in the boys, again, back to the Boy Scouts again, right? And yeah, I can always hear my dad's voice. There's a few things that he would tell me that keep resonating today, right? Um, the first one is uh, not giving up, mm -hmm. right? Um, he tried to, he had a saying that was, can't, can't do anything because it never has, mm -hmm. right? So don't say you can't do something, right? Try it out, keep going, right? The next thing he would tell me would be, um, it's under commitment, right? Under the topic of commitment here is if you're going to take your time to do something, go all the way. Right? Don't just do it halfway. Hmm. Um, go all the way. Be the best at whatever you're going to do. If you're going to put effort in it, be the best. All right. So I applied that to everything, whether it was, uh, you know, uh, academics, whether it was sports in college. Uh, whatever I was doing, if I'm going to put my effort into it, I'm not just going to do it halfway. I'm going to go all the way with it. All right. And um, uh, the last thing was sort of had to go with leadership is taking care of your people. All right. He, he taught me the concept of leaders eat last long before Simon Sinek even yeah. brought it up. Right. <laughs> yeah. But my dad was in the Navy um, and wow. it was, um, the concept of leaders eat last. You take care of your people before you take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. And so that would be you know, my first role model with leadership and those concepts there. Um, sort of in the academic um, leadership space, I guess, would be John Maxwell is a role model. Uh, I've read a lot of his books, seen a lot of his videos. Um, I'm actually a certified leadership coach and trainer through the John Maxwell team. So I've gone to events, I've met John Maxwell, I've seen him live and um, mm. he, what he says resonates with me. All right. And then a last role, I'll call him a role model, um, a real leader that I've actually had as a boss myself um, is when I used to work for the company that formerly known as Sara Lee. <laughs> the Sara okay. Lee Corporation doesn't exist anymore. 
Um, but uh, I had a um, plant manager named Brian Lang. And Brian is now the director of manufacturing at um, Hershey Company in Pennsylvania. Oh, wow. Yeah. And so Brian, Brian was great. Um, you could tell he, you, he cared. Um, now, just before I started with Sarah Lee, I actually had to delay my start date by a few days because my father-in-law passed away. And I called them up saying, hey, I can't start on Monday. This is what happened. They're like, that's OK. Take care of it. Do what you need to do. Um, with, somehow they found the funeral home and sent flowers mm, <laughs> to the wow. funeral home. I, they did their own research. I didn't give them any of this information. So going into the whole relationship, I knew this is somebody that cared. This is somebody that had some awareness of his people. Um, First week I'm there, he meets with me and he gives me a copy of uh, John Maxwell's Daily Reader uh, with an inscription inside. And he's the only leader I've had that actually on a regular basis, we would meet in his office and just discuss leadership. Mm. So um, yeah, so I would say uh, Brian is uh, of the real bosses I've had. Now I've had a lot of good bosses, have several not so good bosses too, but uh, <laughs> Of, of all of them, Brian really hit it there as far as leadership development and the importance of constantly feeding um, your leadership. Yeah, I, I, you know, that's a great lesson for those listening in. You know, you hire somebody and um, this, you know, in this case, he, you know, found out, you know, he, one, he knew there was a death in the family. Mm -hmm. Two, he found out where the funeral home was. Three, he sent flowers to to that and he didn't even know you right didn't even know I, I i had a similar situation with a boss i i came i was recruited back to a company i used to work work with but mm -hmm. uh, i came back and um he had um sent a giant basket of like cookies and crackers and snacks and it was a card and it said i'm excited about all the great things i know you're going to do and you know like okay like i i don't even know you from adam you don't really know me other than my reputation but uh, to, to, you know, say, send something to my house, to my family and say, I'm, you know, I'm looking forward to the great things you're doing. What a, what an impact statement you make on a new hire, you know? So leaders, if you're listening in your new hires, what are you doing to wow them days before they even walk in the door? So those great, great story. That's a, and I had a similar situation of a great leader that I worked with that uh, did a similar thing. So fantastic. That's great. I like it. Um, so let's uh, let's get in a little bit to you. Know, you have a new venture. Uh, it's called the High Adventure Leadership, and you've got a website out that's out now. And I've read you've got a couple of uh, uh, podcast, uh, sorry, uh, blog posts that are out there, and you've got mm -hmm. how to reach you. And so, tell us what's going on with this new uh, new venture of yours. All right. Well, the concept of High Adventure Leadership actually developed back in 2020 during uh, the height of the pandemic and the lockdowns. Right. <laughs> um, you know, I was uh, um, found myself working from home. Actually, the company I work for now, um, let's just say I had to take an unpaid day off each week <laughs> okay. um, just uh, because of the pandemic and economics the way they were for the company. So uh, that gave me some free time. So I said, well, you know, um, this whole thing about leadership and improving leaders and what can I do? Um, to pass on what I've learned and get it out there in the hands of people who need it. Uh, like I said, there's, there's tens of thousands of leadership books out there. There's hundreds of podcasts, but gosh, how do, how do we package this? How do we make connections to those young leaders? Especially, I'm actually focused more at the people at the beginning of their careers, right? That need this leadership training before they rise up in the ranks. Right. Is how, how do you get them, right? You know, to steal a, um, a line from the matrix, right? And how do we get them to take that red pill of leadership yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and open their eyes and see, see what needs to be done? Um, so uh, I have this concept, high adventure leadership. Uh, didn't know exactly what I was going to do with it yet, but I said, I got to do something. I've got to get out there. I've got to share my knowledge, teach people, do things. Um, and so I've been sort of tinkering with it for a while. Finally, this last week, we launched the website. 
So it's brand new out there. Um, not a whole lot to the website. Like you said, there's a couple of blog posts I put on there. But um, as I've discussed with you before, sometimes you just got to hit the start button, right? Oh, yeah. Hit the, hit the start button and build the airplane while you're flying it. So um, highadventureleadership.com is the website. And our mission is to develop better leaders by improving the way organizations de do leadership development. Um, <clears throat> so the plans for the website are, uh, there's short term, there's gonna be more blog posts. Um, can't guarantee one every week, but maybe every one to two weeks, I'll try to get a little bit of writing in there. Um, the next step would be videos because I'm more into videos than I am into writing. So and I'm you're very, to... by the way, you're very talented in video production, <laughs> by the way. Well, thank you. Yeah, for those who want to see some samples of that, check out the X Factor podcast. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, it'd be some short videos, you know, maybe a couple minutes, three minutes, five minute long videos talking about leadership topics. So that's, a, that's the next step. Um, the long-term goal is to develop um, leadership courses. Mm. We want to package some leadership courses um, that folks can access by subscription um, for a nominal, nominal fee because what my focus is is the people at the beginning of their careers. Now, if you go to the leadership space, you Google leadership classes, you'll find classes out there, but a lot of them are quite pricey. Right. You go to a leadership workshop, they want 500, 700, 1,000 bucks to attend this workshop. Um, if you're, you know, an executive in a company, yeah, you might have the cash to do that. Um, but if you're a young uh, college graduate trying to figure out, you know, where you, how you're going to pay your rent and eating top ramen every night, <laughs> um, you, you don't have the... Uh, funds to maybe um, sign up for some of these courses. So I'm going to try to come, with some, come up with something that has a price point for those people at the beginning of their careers, right? That it'll be useful to them. Um, they can help use them to feed their leadership development and, um, and grow and become better leaders. That's fantastic. Yeah. So it is, uh, it's highadventureleadership.com. And um, uh, yeah, I do highly encourage people to check it out. It's got, uh, it's the beginning of something that's going to be great. And uh, I'm really excited for you uh, pressing the go button uh, and getting started on this because uh, I think we need more people like you in the space, teaching, uh, sharing. Uh, you know, it's one thing to be an academic. And I think, I think there's a place for academic leaders, the people that uh, study, uh, you know, different aspects of leadership and come up with, you know, theories and what have you, Th that's important. But I also think it's really important that practitioners of leadership start teaching and sharing what they know, because I think that maybe out of all the different disciplines, leadership is one that is experience-based. You really do have to be in the trenches. You have to have those years. You mm -hmm. have to have made the mistakes. You have to have, uh, see the way, you know, people people react to change, to be able to put in, you know, to be able to lead uh, really great things and accomplish great tasks. And, 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 and you, you, those experiences, uh, I think the people that have done those are probably the best to be able to share and teach. And, and you're one of those practitioners. So I'm excited about this new website, this new venture. And, uh, and I do really encourage listeners to check it out because I think it's going to be something that, again, it was one more one more tool in the toolbox that leaders can use to help develop and get better and become what I call a leader worth following. So, absolutely. And those of us that are sharing and trying to develop better leaders, right? It's we're not in competition with each other. I mean, the, no, not the, at all. Yeah. the it's an open field out there. And actually, um, what I'll be looking for in the future is to do maybe some team ups, you know, kind of like the old Marvel comic thing team up, you know? Um, yeah. But, uh, it's getting the message out there. Um, it's teaming up. It's supporting each other in this space. Uh, we're not, like I said, we're not in competition with each other. There's, there's so much, um, uh, you know, fertile ground out there to plant leadership seeds. That, um, yeah, there's no competition. Well, so, I mean, uh, 70 percent yeah. of employees are, remain disengaged at work at this at this moment uh, at this yeah. hour. So. You know, there's bad leaderships out there. I just finished an article writing about Urban Meyer and his toxic leadership of the 
uh, Jacksonville Jaguars just getting fired. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I knew a little bit about him, but but the more I dug deep about this guy was a complete toxic leader running oh. a toxic, he created a toxic environment in which he actually physically accosted players. He he uh, emotionally attacked them. I mean, just, just a, you know, yeah. and that's considered okay, normal. That's a considered all right as far as a leader is concerned until they cross the line, I guess, and and hit somebody, I think that's when he finally said, they finally said, okay, this is enough, you need to go. But yeah. my point is, is that there's a ton of really bad leaders out there. And we, the more of us that are on the good side, right, I think mm -hmm. helping, teaching, training, that number, I, I dream of that number being not 70%, but 30%, 30% of employees are disengaged at work. That's great. I'm fine with that, right? <laughs> that means that we're the majority are engaged and they've got great leaders and they understand the mission and the vision mm -hmm. and they and they want to contribute to that. So yeah, I don't think there's any competition. I think we are all in it together to try to develop a world with better bosses. So uh, that's Absolutely. fantastic. Yeah. And I'm glad that you're in the in the trenches now and you've got uh you got the website out there and uh you know and that's just something that you can build from. I know I started my website a, a few years back. And it was just it was just a blog post basically, and then eventually I realized that nobody is reading blog posts as much anymore. <laughs> so I started doing podcasting and and uh, writing books and and uh, but yeah, I mean any way we can get the message out, and uh, so this is great, and I really do encourage listeners to check it out, and um, yeah, and uh, and and look at all the great things James is doing. So. James, I really appreciate you coming on the show and sharing all of your insights. Uh, I'm excited about your new venture and uh, I'm going to keep uh, list, uh, or tuning in, listening and following. And uh, I encourage uh, listeners as well. Absolutely. Thank you, John. It's been great.